Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to cover hypo and hyperchloremia. And whenever you get done watching this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this content. So let's get started. Chloride is an electrolyte that actually has an important relationship with other electrolytes in the body, such as sodium. And chloride, as we know, is a negatively charged ion, while sodium is positively charged. And they both like to congregate outside of the cell. Therefore, because of this, usually if there is a loss of sodium, there's also going to be a loss of chloride. And on the flip side, if there's an increase of sodium, there's going to be an increase of chloride. Therefore, you're going to see a lot of overlapping with their causes, their signs and symptoms, and the interventions. So chloride is very important for helping maintain our acid base balance because of its relationship with bicarb. They actually have an opposite relationship where when the chloride level is low, the bicarb level will be high and vice versa. Plus, whenever you have an imbalance of chloride that's occurring either due to metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, the potassium level will be altered as well. So that is why whenever you're taking care of a patient with a chloride imbalance, as a nurse, you wanna be looking at three other other lab levels. You want to be looking at that sodium level because of its relationship with sodium. Also, you want to look at the bicarb level and the potassium level. Also, it plays a role in digestion because we need it in order to make hydrochloric acid. And it plays a role with balancing the fluids in our body with the help of sodium. A normal level is 95 to 105 milliequivalents per liter. Now, chloride levels are maintained with the help of our kidneys. They tweak our blood and decide, okay, how much chloride we need. If we don't need a lot, we're going to excrete it. Also, it's excreted through the sweat and the GI juices. So if you have some issue with the kidneys or sweating too much or GI juices, chances are you can imbalance your chloride levels. So let's look at hypochloremia. So this is where we have low blood levels of chloride and some main causes are typically GI related where the patient is losing a lot of chloride through vomiting or their gastric juices like suction or if they have an ileostomy. Um, an ileostomy also can cause hyponatremia because this is where a surgical procedure has been created to bring the small bowel on top of the skin so the patient is having effluent, which is stool coming through that. Now this is really rich in sodium, also chloride. So if they have where they're putting out a lot of effluent, that can cause these levels to drop. Also diuretics can cause it, thiazides, that was very similar to hyponatremia burns, and cystic fibrosis. With cystic fibrosis, these patients lose a lot of chloride, especially through their sweat. And patients who have fluid volume overload, like heart failure, SIADH, that's gonna dilute the chloride. And metabolic alkalosis can do this as well. This is where we have a high level of bicarb, and this is going to drop our chloride level. And the reason it does this is because bicarb and chloride have this like opposite relationship, especially in how they shift in and out of the red blood cell to help with proper gas exchange. Now the signs and symptoms of hypochloremia don't have their own specific ones compared to these other fluid and electrolytes. They typically are going to be associated with whatever's causing this problem. And if you can really remember the signs and symptoms of hyponatremia, you can remember what hypochloremia is going to be because they really overlap. So you may see dehydration signs and symptoms with an increased heart rate along with a decreased blood pressure, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, or being lethargic. Now let's look at the nurse's role in treatment for a patient with hypochloremia. And to help us remember that information, we're going to remember the word loss because we have a loss of chloride in the blood. L is for look at the sodium level and assess for signs and symptoms of hyponatremia. Because remember, these two electrolytes, they like to copy each other. So just to recap from our previous review on an imbalance of sodium, a normal sodium level was about 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. So anything less than 135 is hyponatremia. So some nursing interventions you want to remember for this is that you want to monitor that patient's neuro status because whenever that sodium level drops too low, patients can become very confused. And whenever a patient's confused, they're at risk for injury to themselves because they're not really aware of their surroundings like they normally are. And this can be due to swelling in the brain because whenever we are dropping those electrolyte levels outside of that cell, especially of our sodium, water will start to rush into that cell 
cause those cells to swell and we get swelling of the brain. In addition, you want to put that patient on seizure precautions because they're at risk for seizures and they can experience respiratory distress. So look at their respiratory status. And we wanna make sure we're watching how much they're taking in and how much they're putting out. So monitoring their eyes and nose, their vital signs, and looking at those daily weights. O is for other labs to monitor. So you wanna be looking at not only that sodium level, but look at the bicarb level and the potassium level. So a patient with a low chloride level could be presenting with a high bicarb and low potassium, especially if this cause of hypochloremia is due to metabolic alkalosis. Because remember, bicarb and potassium are also related to the balance of chloride because they all work together to balance that acid base system and the fluid in our body. S is for saline, and we're talking about normal saline administration. So we can give a patient through their IV some normal saline, and what's this going to do is it's going to help add chloride along with sodium directly into that blood and help increase those levels. And then our last S is sources of chloride rich food. So if your patient can take things by mouth, you want to help encourage them to consume foods that are high in chloride. And um, anything that's really salty or has a lot of sodium in it is also going to have chloride with it. So table salt is good, tomatoes like tomato juice, olives, seafood, processed meats and canned foods are all rich in chloride. Now let's look at hyperchloremia. What can drive that chloride level up? Well it's going to be similar to the causes of hypernatremia because again sodium and chloride really go hand in hand. So consuming too much sodium can drive the chloride level up like giving the patient too many hypotonic solutions. Also the patient not drinking enough or losing too much water can dehydrate them raising that sodium level up along with the chloride decrease bicarb level. Whenever the bicarb drops, that can increase the chloride because of their opposite relationship. So losing too much with maybe having too much diarrhea. Also the Kahn syndrome, this is where they have the increased aldosterone. So the patient is going to be retaining a lot of sodium, but excreting potassium and that can elevate our chloride level medications like corticosteroids, and then metabolic acidosis can do this as well. Maybe a medication leading to this condition or some type of renal problem. Now the signs and symptoms of hyperchloremia are similar to hypernatremia and acidosis. And to help you remember those signs and symptoms, you can remember the word fried, which is the same mnemonic we use to remember hypernatremia. So F is for fatigue. R is for restlessness, really agitated. They can become confused because they're having central nervous changes. I is for increased reflexes, respirations. This can progress to seizures and coma. E is for extreme thirst. This is a big sign. And then D is for decreased urinary output and dry mouth slash skin. Now let's look at the nurse's role in treatment for a patient who has hyperchloremia. And to help us remember that information, we're gonna remember high CL for high chloride. H is for hold sodium chloride infusions and sodium slash chloride rich foods. They'll need to follow a low sodium diet because we don't want to administer more sodium chloride into their blood because this will actually increase their levels even more and increase that chloride level. And that's one of the side effects of giving too much sodium chloride infusions to a patient. I is for instead use lactated ringers. So LR can be used to help decrease that chloride level. But why does it do it? How does it do it? Well, whenever we administer LR IV, that lactate, once it enters into the body, is actually turned into bicarb. And this is going to help increase bicarb levels, which in turn will bring down the chloride levels, which is what we want in hyperchloremia. Because remember, bicarb and chloride have an opposite relationship. And this is really good if your patient's experiencing acidosis, which is one of the causes of hyperchloremia, because this will help increase the pH in the blood make it more alkaline. Also, um, the administration of bicarb and certain diuretics can actually help decrease chloride levels as well. C is for collect I's and O's, so how much they're taking in, how much they're putting out. That's going to be very helpful in allowing you to monitor their fluid balance status, also their daily weights and their vital signs. Then L is for labs to monitor. So as a nurse, you want to check out that chloride level. Make sure it's not trending too high. 
and that it's actually coming down with the treatment we're doing. You also wanna check out that sodium level, the bicarb level, especially if we're giving them some fluids to help increase the bicarb level. We wanna make sure we're not making them too alkaline and increasing that blood pH too much. You also want to look at potassium because they could have hyperkalemia, especially when acidosis is presenting because whenever acidosis is happening in the body, potassium leaves the cell and moves into the extracellular area, hence the blood, in exchange for hydrogen ions so we can have an elevated potassium level. Now let's test your knowledge with this quiz question. Which type of IV fluid below can be prescribed to treat a patient with a chloride level of 69 milliequivalents per liter? A a, sodium bicarbonate, B, normal saline, C, lactated ringers. The answer is B, normal saline. This chloride level of 69 is too low and we're actually having hypochloremia. So with this, we would want to administer normal saline because that would help replace our sodium and our chloride level and help increase that level so we don't have hypochloremia anymore. Now, if you'd like more free quiz questions, you can access the link below and thank you so much for watching.